Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us on the Momentum Planner webinar. We have a lot to go through today, and I'm super pumped that you're here. Um, we're going to go ahead and let people jump in and uh, pile in here. Sometimes it can take Zoom just a second to let everybody in. Hello, hello. So a quick primer of how we're going to do the day. If you would like to chat with us, make sure that in the right column on most devices that you highlight both all attendees, or excuse me, all panelists and attendees. If it's just all panelists, then that's just gonna to be to me. If it's just me and Jess, if it's just gonna be, um, if you hit, go to all panelists and attendees, then it's gonna to go to everyone else. So if you have any feedback that you would like to give me or Jess, or if you can't hear or you have a tech woes, use all panelists. Otherwise, use all panelists and attendees. So if you are the chatting type, go ahead and chat in um, over on the right side. Let us know where you are, what you're interested to, to learn today. Um, hey from Ireland, that's from Steve, Stephen Ireland. You like how I did that one? Oh, yeah. So Jess, I realize while I'm talking about this that normally I ask you to orient us to Zoom and I don't know why I jumped in to do it. Did I miss anything today? No, you, I think you covered all the bases. Yeah, panelists and attendees, um, make sure you have that marked when you're chatting with people on the right side. And then you can also click the Q&A button underneath the video where you see Charlie to ask us questions directly. Great, and I would also love to know, you could type it in the chat window as well. If you're new to the planners, just say new. Um, and if you have been using them for a while, say, um, using them for a while, something along those lines. We do have people who attend multiple sessions of this webinar because it can be useful to have, um, you know, some new insights on there and, and to come back and try it again. So, um, all right, so we got a lot of new, all right, so I tried it in the past, using them for a while and getting better. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Teresa Pena. I think we've got about everybody we're going to get in today. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the uh, presentation. Now, what I want you to be thinking about is I'm going to need a few brave souls. And those brave souls, I'm going to need to be thinking about um, walking us through the projects that you're thinking about for the year so we can have some live examples of how to chunk them down into smaller parts and how to use the system. So, you know, if you want to be one of those souls, definitely let me know and we'll go ahead and pull you on, but we're going to need some people to make this less general and very much specific. You know, if you've ever attended a monthly momentum call with us, or you've ever attended a webinar, you know, I love Q and A. Actually, if I had my way, I would probably just show up and just say like, Hey, what are your questions? And just go from there. But I also know that it could be useful to have some structure to this. So we're going to do a little bit of structure. Then we're just going to roll right into Q and A. About midway through, I'm gonna stand up and go to the whiteboard, um, but I just got off of an interview for the last hour, and so I need to rest my back. So thanks for bearing with me. We'll do that here in just a second. Alrighty, so the trickiest part of this presentation for me is seeing if this is going to work. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, go to present, except for I'm gonna to need to go to Zoom. So give me just a second. This is always the tricky part, as I said. Um, share. Nope, 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 there we go. All righty, so Jess, can everybody see my full screen now? Yep, we can see it. Great, hard part's over. Now during this period, I can't also attend questions. So Jess is gonna be monitoring the chat window for questions. If you wanna submit a question, you can either put it in chat or you can cue yourselves by using the Q&A function that's on the bottom or right, depending upon the device that you're using. Okay, so we're gonna jump right in. Um, we're gonna talk about some core concepts um, that you can, we're gonna use with the planner. We're gonna walk through each planner, starting with the annual momentum planner. I'll switch and actually dive right into the portfolio version of the PDF. Um, we're gonna talk about themes and priorities, and then we're gonna talk about shaping quarters. So, all right. I can very much come from the military um, presentation background where you tell people what you're going to tell them, you tell them, and then you tell them what they told them. So there we go. It works. A little bit of background. Um, the planners started as teaching aids. I was working with them with clients. I was working with other creative folks. And it was just, we needed some ways to get those ideas into 
coherent, doable form. So they've started really rough, really fugly, and just started as teaching aids, and they've grown from them over the last decade. Now, I want to be clear that um, these are brainstorming tools, or that these are not so much brainstorming tools as they are planning tools. Now, the big difference is when you're doing plan brainstorming, that's where you want to bring out your mind maps. That's where you want to bring out maybe your bullet journals. You want to bring out your whiteboards, open sheets of paper to get it all out so that you can see what you're looking at versus planning, which is when you start to commit to those ideas and start figuring out how you're going to do it. So some people can get um, frustrated because they're trying to do brainstorming on the, on the planners when really they are for planning. Okay. Um, they're meant to be your productivity dashboard. Um, not necessarily your to-do list, meaning um, some people want to put all of the things on the um, on the momentum planners, and it's actually not a great tool for that. The Action Item Catcher is a good companion if you don't have something like Asana or Trello or some other action center for your task. Um, and we'll talk down the road about how we can use like things like admin blocks to um, put those on your planner, but then use other tools to help you figure out what you need to do during the admin block. So just want to be clear that that's going on too. Um, if you have any major questions where Jess thinks I should stop, she's going to say, hey, Charlie, we have a question here. Otherwise, I'm just going to roll on. Now, part of what makes the momentum planners work is the project pyramid. Um, funny enough, right now, there's not very much content on the website about the project pyramid. Um, it is a core feature of uh, my upcoming book is actually coming out next Tuesday, start finishing. And we'll be figuring out how to get which pieces of the content back on the website so that you don't necessarily have to buy the book to understand about the project pyramid because we realize you may have bought the um, <laughs> you may have bought the planners um, and not the book. Um, however, highly recommend picking up the book because it goes into a lot of really useful detail. Okay, so the project pyramid. Oh, here are the core concepts. We'll just jump into them. The project pyramid. So the basic idea here is you start with a bigger goal, like lose weight. It's not really a smart goal, but we're gonna go with it as a goal. And then you start breaking it down into the smaller constituent parts. Like what do you need to do this quarter to go towards that yearly goal? All right, now that you have the quarter figured out, what are you gonna do during these three months like each month to, to do that, then weeks, so on and so forth. Now, one thing to consider, um, a given, for instance, a quarter may not have three month size tasks that go with it, that's possible, right? But we know what month size projects are, okay? So once we start sliding into the five projects rule, which I'm going to talk about in a second, that will make more sense. But it's, don't think, okay, it absolutely must be that one quarter has three month size projects to it. It could have multiple month size projects to it, and that's going to make you um, prioritize differently. Just like one month may not have four week size projects. That said, it could be a useful way for you to help with the chunking that needs to happen for things. Cause sometimes that can be really hard to figure out is like, what, how do I break this um, down into smaller parts? Maybe we can consider a month size project that clumps together a lot of different ones. And again, we'll talk about that as we go into it more. So I want you to be thinking that the other thing I want to talk about with the project pyramid is this is how things blow up on you, right? Because you're like, Oh, it's just one simple goal. And then when you look at all of the projects and all the blocks and tasks, which we had to make a big block under there because it literally, we could not fit enough on the screen without it being really, really crazy. Like that pyramid has a bunch of two hour blocks and a bunch of tasks. And so if you've ever wondered like, how did I go from these three simple goals, yearly goals or these yearly resolutions to all of this work that I can't get done, it's because the bottom of the pyramid is so much bigger and there's so much more work at the bottom. And this is also why, why you'll have people like myself say, like, maybe don't choose to do 17 year size projects or year size goals, because you gotta think every one of those is gonna blow up down there at the bottom, okay? This will become more clear here in just a second. So the five projects rule, it's a core tool. All of our planners have, when you look at the project slots, they all have five slots. Because I want you to start thinking 
project equals a slot, project equals slot. So no more than five projects. When you're looking at your planners, you have that many slots. Now the long form that few people besides me are going to say is no more than five active projects per time perspective, per time perspective. So what does that mean? Time perspective, I'll flip back. We all, I think, intuitively know the difference between a week size project and a month size project. Just like we kind of know the intuitive difference between a month size project to a quarter size project. If that is super foreign to you, please do let me know in the, in the chat and we can, I, I can dive into that a little bit more. We needed to do that on the momentum, or excuse me, on the monthly momentum call last week. So I get that, um, you know, there's some terminology that's being used here and it may not sit well with you, but we kind of know the difference in those sizes. So that's super handy because the time perspective, we can say, okay, when I'm doing my weekly planning, when I'm looking at my weekly momentum planner, the time perspective is a week. So I'm thinking about week size projects. When you're using your monthly momentum planner, you can think, okay, the time perspective is a month. So I'm thinking about month size projects. Every one of our planners, um, I'll have to check. We had some slight changes, but I'm going to say it now and then correct myself later if I'm, if I'm incorrect. Um, every one of our planners will show you three different time perspectives. For instance, if we're looking at the monthly momentum planner, you're going to see your broader quarterly goals and you're going to be able to plan out the week. Okay. The reason we do that is we want to give you one higher slice of um, vision so you know what those five projects relate to. And we want to give you room to actually plan out the size under that. Because remember, when you need more clarity of purpose, when you need more clarity of purpose, you're going to zoom up to the highest or to another higher perspective. So if you're looking at your weekly momentum planner and you see your five main projects and it's not super clear why you're doing those projects, your first thought is going to be like, okay, how do those relate to my month size projects and my monthly goals? Okay. That's when you look at purpose. Why is that important? Where does it fit in? So on and so forth. If you're needing more clarity about what to do and how to get it done, you zoom down a month of detail or excuse me, down a time perspective. So again, if you're looking at the weekly momentum planner, and you're seeing your five weekly projects and you want to know, well, that's great, but how do I get them done? That's where you start looking at your daily um, time perspectives. Okay. I'm going to pause here to make sure this is a core concept. And so I'm just going to jump in to see if we're getting this because if we're not, then I may need to, I may need to slow down and explain it differently, but um, I'm just going to check in on learning real quick. How are you doing with that? Just in the chat window, say, got it, don't got it, understand it, super clear. Thank you. Thanks. Throughout the rest of this, you could just type TU, um, TU or thumbs up. I forgot that we could do thumbs up too. TU means thumbs up. I got it. Um, okay, so Stephen, you're absolutely right. Look up for reasons and purpose, down for tactics would be another way of saying that. Okay, good. Everybody's still with me. Thanks so much. Um, might want to have an infographic I can print in planner to remind me. Jess, go ahead and tag that one. I think that's a great idea. Y'all, that's how we make these better every year. So I'll tell you, if you use the planners every year, you're going to be happy, but maybe a little frustrated because on webinars like this and in conversations with people, when someone says something great, like what Sean said, we actually think about it. It's like, hmm, how can we do that? How can we make that easier to understand? So Sean, we might actually steal that one from you. Thanks for the suggestion. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my Google um, presentation. Alrighty. Alrighty. So, now on that point, remember that five projects is the upper limit, not the default. Now this is super, super important because people are like, great, we should always choose five projects and there's always five projects. Nope, not at all. 
Um, there are different ways of thinking about this. So one thing that I help that I want people to, to encourage people to do is like use three for work, what I'm going to call economic projects for the rest of this um, or economic work for the rest of this presentation and two for life, which I'll probably call life work for the rest of this presentation. Um, that is just helpful because um, one, we want to consider that anything that takes time, energy, and attention is a project. Okay. So last month, if you had kids, you had a major project because if you have kids, I should say, you had a major project because getting them from that summer way of life and being underfoot and doing all the things to going back to school is its own project, right? Um, it takes time, energy, and attention. And it turns out it's a life project. But what happens is we plan out a full deck of projects and we don't assume that some of those projects are going to pop up. So last month, that's a good example. If you're going into the holidays, like if you're hosting your family for a week during the holidays, that's a project. Might be a life project, but so on and so forth. I don't, the only reason that I'm applying that adjective economic or life is because I want us to plan and prioritize the work of our lives as much as we talk about the life of our work. And so much we end up focusing on the work that we that our life gets slid into open times and free times. And sometimes we need to plan our life projects first and then look at, at, our, economic, at our economic work. Now, there are different ways you can, you can do this. If you have a full-time job and it's not so much project driven, but you know it's sitting on a lot of your time, your available time and energy and attention, you can decide, you know what? I only get two projects or I only get three projects because work is sitting on my, my employed job, what pays the bills and puts food on the table is sitting on, you know, two of my projects. And I don't, I don't have much say in what's going on. That's really clear if you're in a customer service job, if you're um, a restaurant manager or something like that, you show up to work all day is just putting out stuff that happened, putting off fires that happen to work. And that is what, you know, that's what work is. And that's great. Um, not quite project driven in that same way. So you just might say, okay, I work 40 hours a week. Um, my time, energy, and attention is taken up that's work. So I get two projects in that two projects is where you might think about your side hustle. That might be where you think about your creative hobby. That might be where you think about other things. I'm going to pause here because meeting people are like, Charlie, no way in hell can I get, can I do all the things I want to do in five projects or two projects or seven projects I just can't. And you're right. You can't. We're trying to focus on those active projects. Everybody see that indented active up there or that italicized active? All the things you want to do and all the things you will do are two different things, okay? All the things you want to do and all the things you will do are two different things. I want us to be more intentional in prioritizing the things we will do and not try to count our aspirations as priorities, okay? So recurring projects or routines may count as a project. Um, if you're in a small business, if you own your own small business and you know that you just have a certain amount of recurring client work that um, this comes and goes and, and things like that, you may want to count that as a project. And so the math is going to be the same as, as what I just said. You can either say, you know what, this is a super busy client month. Um, most of my client work is super reactive. So, or meetings driven. So um, I'm going to take away a couple of project slots because I just know I'm going to be super busy. You can do it that way or in your planner, you can say, you know, client work and then extra client work just so you don't make the mistake of assuming that you have more space than you actually do. Okay. The five projects rule, y'all does a lot of your work for you. And I completely understand you might have to fight against the constraint and then come back around. Um, and I, I've had to do it myself. I still have to do it myself. But once you sort of accept that, it helps with triaging. It helps with planning. Um, it helps with um, saying no to the stuff that doesn't matter most. And so it's a really powerful tool or you know, mental tool. All right, so time blocking. 
Time blocking is really important when we start looking at your week and your days. You're looking at your week and your days. Um, there's a post on this. Jess will drop it into links real quick. But for a primer here, or do you say primer in England, in, in the UK? Um, Steve, let me know. I think it was Steve. Let me know. Um, for a primer here, focus blocks are 90 minutes to two hours where you can focus on your creative thing or your deep thinking thing or maybe your reading or studying thing. For most of us, I say, if you can do it, if you can't do it while you're listening to spoken word music, it's probably something that requires a focus block. That said, I have a client who can only get into focus if she's got like a podcast and a TV playing at the same time. I don't get it, but it works for her. I'm not, that's not the hill I want to die on. Okay. So um, 90 minutes to two hours during those focus blocks. It's not that the whole time you're sitting there saying like, I'm just looking at a screen. I'm just writing. You can get up and get, go to the bathroom. You can get more tea, but you're not switching context. Context meaning switching to another tool, switching to another medium, like you're not going from writing to um, writing emails or Twitter, or you're not going from painting to playing music, or you're not going from, you know, planning something to, you know, um, writing out a report on something. You stay on point during those focus blocks. Social or service blocks. Social blocks are those blocks of time where you are you know, most fit for human consumption and kind of your best version of human. So for instance, for me, before 11 o'clock in the day, I'm not my best version of human. Usually kind of stumbly, may or may not be fully present, maybe a little bit more on the grumpy side. So it makes sense for me not to plan for meetings before that. So I plan for the afternoon. I'm super gregarious and happy in the afternoon. It makes sense for my social blocks to be there. If you are an entrepreneur or you are in a business where you have autonomy and you work with other people, um, you know, that your service blocks will go during those times. Um, why 90 minutes to a two hours? That's what sometimes people will ask me. When you think about how much time it takes for you to really prepare by, you know, looking at the email chain or reviewing your notes from the last meeting and get into the meeting, have the meeting, and then jump out of the meeting and actually attend to next actions and things like that, it tends to be 90 minutes to two hours. If you don't schedule enough time for that in those social blocks, you'll end up with needing to spend more in admin blocks. So I'm pretty sure you all have been through that experience where you've had back-to-back -back meetings for a few days in a row. And then you've had to have that day or two of just all the emails, all the follow-up, all the reports, all the things you have to do um, because you weren't able to do it in between meetings. Well, if you schedule enough time for, the service and for your social blocks to have that time built in, you never end up with that huge pile of 16 emails to send. And, you know, it gives you one less thing to procrastinate on. It also helps you not feel as crunched and constrained and running from meeting to meeting to meeting. That said, if running from meeting to meeting to meeting really truly does work for you, do you? I just know about 80% of the people that I know truly when they think about it, it's not working for them. Okay, I'll get off that soapbox and get on another. All right, admin blocks, 30 minutes to one hour. Why 30 minutes to one hour? Because if we spend more time than that, really doing, you know, calling the IRS or, you know, um, you know, processing email, filing papers, whatever, we can tend to get pretty pissy about it, right? We tend not to want to do it too long. And so 30 minutes to one hour is a good amount of time that you can jump in there, okay? And lastly, recovery blocks, eating, meditating, exercising, um, playing with your puppy, sitting in a hot tub, you name it. It doesn't matter what it is, but what matters is that it helps you recover and recharge. Helps you recover and recharge, okay? I've learned with creative knowledge workers and creative folks that we have to talk about recovery blocks and where they live on our daily schedule because if I don't, we will treat our, head, our bodies like head transportation vehicles and run around dehydrated, hungry, um, depleted, and, you know, um, carrying more inches in our waistlines than we would otherwise like. So um, not judging, I'm just saying that's what we do. Okay, focus blocks are your limb fact for momentum. That was awkward. Focus blocks are your limb fact, limiting factor for momentum. Meaning if you don't have enough focus blocks to fuel your projects, you're not going to make the headway that you would otherwise make, okay? 
Um, many people end up with stories about them not being able to get to, to being procrastinators or, you know, being terrible planners or um, being people who get easily distracted, so on and so forth, when the reality is they simply do not have enough focus blocks in their schedule to power their projects. So you might be thinking, Charlie, how many focus blocks do I need? I see you. I know you asked that question. General rule here, three focus blocks per project. Three focus blocks per project. So um, think about it this way. A project, I'll, I'll take writing since that's very familiar and I'll do a blog post. For many novice writers, um, you're gonna write for you know, probably a focus block or two, you're just gonna be drafting. And then the third, the third focus block may be editing and finally pushing it on the website, okay? You're like, Charlie, it doesn't take that long. Why? It shouldn't take that long. You might go into those stories, but when, again, you look at the time logs of people that I've worked with, it's like two focus blocks to write it. Another focus block, it can't quite be an admin block and do the editing because they're not all the way in, um, but it's a sort of a weird um, clicky focus block, and then they push it to done. If you don't have enough of that, what you'll end up doing is half writing that blog post and then it being stuck in drafts for six months. Again, not judging, just saying I've seen enough people's back end of their blogs and have six months or, you know, have 60 half done blog posts that just didn't see the light of day. Okay. Um, we talk about heat mapping on product on, on PF, and that's just the idea that there are certain times of day where you are creatively on fire, and there are certain times of day that you're dead. There is a rough correlation between those energy level and these blocks. Jess will give us a link um, in the chat window for this, right? So obviously, as much as possible, when you are in that just had the coffee, still feeling good for the day, um, really wanting to focus and get stuff done, that's where you would put a focus block, ideally, right? Um, if you're in an in-between zone to where you still can focus, you still have a lot of energy, but maybe you're starting to lose that extreme focus that it takes for somebody creative work, that might be where you put a social block, okay? Admin blocks can be a little less energy because you're sometimes pushing things forward, but what I will say, if it's an admin block that's around things like sales or pitching or um, really heavy coordination, you might actually need to put those during your heavy period so that you don't forget details and have to do the thing where you send the email and then, you know, forget, remember that you forgot something and then have to send another email. And then three minutes later, remember that you forgot something and that you didn't send another email. Not saying I've ever done that. Not saying I did it today. I'm just saying, okay. Um, yeah, I'll talk a little bit about the two hour rule. I'm looking at the time. I want to get into Q and A. Um, please, 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 please stop with the myth of the idea that once you get that full day, that full free day where there's not a meeting and there's not a thing that that's when you're going to get your work done. Um, full days are unicorns. We want them to exist. We chase them, but they do not exist. Um, Angela actually disagrees with me, they, with me about unicorns, but that's a conversation for another day. Turns out that when we have a full day, we will squander it. Um, we'll end up on Facebook or we'll end up in different places or, you know, what often happens is the first full day that we actually get for ourselves, our bodies are like, oh, sweet. I don't have you know, 80 gazillion things to do and sleep right? Um, because we're, we run around tired. So that's a normal thing if you've done that. But the thing is, we squander full, full, we squander full days when we have them. Way better to use two-hour blocks as the building block for your projects and your days. All right. So what's not in here that um, I've discussed recently on a monthly momentum call is when you're looking at your daily level, try to pick two different quantas of size. Okay, quanta physicist. Um, two different sizes, uh, de size defaults. Okay, so try to choose 15 minutes. Something could take 15 minutes, like a task, an email, a phone call. It's either a 15 minute thing or it's a two hour thing. It's not counting meetings, right? But when you're trying to look at your work and your task list, it's either a 15 minute thing or it's a two hour thing. Now, what does that mean? If you need to send 10 emails for the day, 
probably better spend like not just those ones where you can say yes thanks bye but the ones where you actually have to type words that make sense that the other person on the end knows what you're trying to do those take at least 15 minutes okay just plan on that as an average um, that's the average i've observed from myself from clients and just doing this enough so if you need to send 10 that's two and a half hours of your day that it's going to take to get that done somebody just got mad at me don't kill the messenger but think about how long it takes for you to actually get through those emails. And we wonder why we have 512 emails sitting in our inbox. Well, there hasn't been those 15 minute slices for each one of them with things left over. So it's either that sort of thing, calling your mom, well, not, not if it's my mom, but if it's your mom, maybe it's calling for 15 minutes or calling to schedule an appointment or something, just plan on those being 15 minutes. And if you're wrong about that, then you get more time. And if you're right about that, then, um, then you haven't tried to constrain it too much. Or two hour blocks, that's for planning, that's for um, all the different things. Planning, writing, you know, sending that report, um, that TPS report that your boss wants every other week. Yep, that one goes in there too. Um, what I'll say here is this is going to frustrate you when you first start trying it, because you will realize, wow, there's a lot that I'm not able to get to. It's kind of like what I said a few slides ago. But, or and, what it will do is start to show you how long it takes to get things done. And if I'm wrong about 15 minutes and two hours and you find a better, a better sizes, you find better sizes of time that fit you, use what works for you, but start with 15 hours, or excuse me, 15 minutes and two hours and go from there as a default, okay? Um, Let's see what else we got. I'm tired of hearing myself talk. Do, do, do. Okay, I'm going to skip a little bit. Um, yeah, the 10-15 split, I'm going to speed up here. 10 minutes in the morning to review your plan, 15 minutes in the afternoon making the plan for the next day. Um, that means that if, we, if you sort of are staying on top of your game, you'll spend about 25 minutes a day that's another question people ask me. How long should I be doing this planning? About 25 minutes a day. You can, when you get faster at it, maybe it's less than that, but when you start, 10, 15. It's super, 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 super hard for most of us to do really good planning first thing in the morning. It's easier for us to do it in the afternoon after we've seen how the day is going to go. So spend 15 minutes in the afternoon making the plan for the next day. On the side, um, as a creative person, that actually will help you start to do some of the creative work. Your unconscious will start working on what you need to work on for the next day. So that's an added bonus. And then 10 minutes reviewing the plan. Okay, I'm gonna skip that slide. Don't, don't wanna talk about resolutions right now unless we really wanna get into it. Um, shaping the quarters. Super important concept here. Our insight and practice. So momentum really happens when you tie quarter-sized projects together. Quarter-sized projects together. Most of us have had that experience where we rocked the crap out of our to-do list for a week. Like all the things, like boom, 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 boom. I did all the things and you get to the end of it and you're like, Ugh, I'm not sure that I really did the things that matter most, right? Um, or we've had a really on fire weekly list and we've been able to do those, those really on fire, but we haven't really figured out how to tie them into broader quarter size projects. But momentum and most of, the, most of the projects that are going to fuel your best life and your best work are ones that happen over quarters and tying quarter size projects together. So, because transformative projects normally require many quarters. I'm just going to say most of us have a hard time with quarters um, just because one a realization here please everyone hear me on this one give yourself a break and when it comes to productivity and project planning because there is no formal education for that it's not like there's a class that we can take in a semester at school that's like how to actually get stuff done right we're just expected to figure it out along the way and shaping quarters um, is super tricky so give yourself a break and just understand that that's where a lot of the progress is going to happen. And that's, that's our goal is to get up to quarters. Okay. 
Before we jump into a walkthrough of the planners, I'm going to check in to see if there are any questions. Remember, I need to um, go here. So are there any major questions? Um, it doesn't look like there's any major questions, but um, so I don't know how to say your name, but somebody asked about um, focus blocks and if they're on a daily or weekly basis. Are the focus blocks on a daily or weekly basis? Or does it depend on Three focus blocks per week per project. So sorry if I wasn't clear about that. Three per week per project. Any other questions? Okay, I'm just scanning the comments real quick. Looks like everybody's good. All righty. So I've either been clear or I've bored you to tears. So moving on, I'll continue um, what I'm doing and you can decide where to go from there. Okay, so let me present here. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to exit, I'm sorry, wrong screen here, y'all. Um, I'm just gonna go right into the momentum planner and we'll just talk about what they are or what's in them. All right, so let me get it. And um, is everybody seeing my screen, Jess? Yep. Okay. I'm also going to make a slight presentation change here. Um, let me go ahead and do this. It's time for me. I said, Jess, do you like how clean this board is? Look at it, it's shiny. It's very shiny, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, this is normally not that way. It gets a lot of love, a lot of use. Everybody drink a little bit, hydrate. Okay. Um, let me get my screen going again. Stop telling people what to do, Charlie. Actually, you kind of showed up for me to tell you what to do. So there we go, drink water. Okay, here we go. So I'm just looking at the um, bigger portfolio. And so we can see everything all at once. I'm gonna start at the top. Um, yearly goals, I'm not gonna go through each one of them, but if you have any particular questions that I don't cover, definitely let me know. Yearly goals are what you might think. Um, on the yearly momentum planner, you can largely think, um, think in terms of setting goals as opposed to necessarily projects. So for instance, your yearly goal might be to lose 25 pounds. That's a great yearly goal. Well, it depends on well, what you're gonna to do to get there, but that's where we put that. Remember, that's gonna be the organizing principle for everything we do going further down, okay? Values, themes, or challenges. This block is, um, you know, you might be looking at values like community, or you might be looking at themes like, you know, um, courage. Or you might also be looking at challenges like health challenges. This is just a block where you just sort of look at some of these positive or negative constraints. Positive constraint being a value or theme that you want to focus your action around. Challenges being a negative constraint that you have to look or that you have to plan for to make sure you can get done. So uh, major events. For the major events, what you want to look at is for that time perspective, be thinking about events that are either really important that happen on a certain day. For instance, um, Jess just got married this last weekend. So that's been a major event. It happens in a day, but you know, it takes a long time to plan if you've ever actually planned a wedding. Um, even when you're super chill and amazing like Jess is, it still takes a long time, right? Um, maybe moving could be there, but if you're going on that you know, trip to Europe for two weeks, 
Yeah, that would be a major event to put on this, what's happening this year, because you're going to have to go around there. So you kind of want to think appropriate to the time horizon in question, the time perspective in question. And then here's where you could break it down into different objectives. Now, what some people will do and find it super helpful is if this were, say, lose weight or lose 25 pounds, right? And this one was um, write book on the history of cappuccino. Um, why did I pick something I can't spell? History of, emo, of lemurs. That's still hard to spell and say, damn it, Charlie, why, what are you doing to yourself? So what they'll do here is they'll say, you know, um, something like establish um, three times a week routine at the gym, right? Um, and then for write the book on history of lemurs, it might be research um, available, research, research the history of lemurs. Um, why did I pick that? I don't know, guys. Just, just roll with me on it. And so on here, they might say establish, you know, um, or increase um, to three times per week. The basic idea is that like whenever you they sort of say that this project one slot, all the projects relate to project one and that's on a simple model. Sometimes that's helpful for people. Sometimes it's not. So I'm just going to throw that out there. I've seen that and when other people have sent me their planners, um, but maybe it's not that. But what we want to be looking for is when you have something that's like a quarter one objective that doesn't actually tie to your yearly goals. Not saying you can't have that because you might have some hanging quarterly objectives. Or, so for instance, if this were quarter one of the year, it might be, you guys are gonna hate me for this, but hey, don't kill the messenger again, like, you know, complete or compile receipts. Or I'm just gonna say, um, start working on taxes. Um, we can go through there and make these goals smarter than what I'm doing, but I'm trying to think to write quickly here so you get what I'm going on. So you might have like start working on taxes and you might have finished taxes here. This is if you're in the States. Um, yeah, those don't fit into any of your yearly goals, but how many years do you have to be like sweating and behind on taxes before you have to finish, figure out like, wait a second, that's a project. I got to do it one way or the other. And that just means that if that's a huge project for you, like you don't have someone doing your taxes, that um, you don't, you know, it takes a project slot, which is realistic. It either takes a project slot and you do it, or you don't give it the project slot and then you're scared of the IRS for a few years. So yeah, you do you on that one. Um, so you can kind of keep things with, with them in that way. And that was just a way of looking at like, this is, believe it or not, for many people who haven't done it before, maybe you've been behind or scared of it, right? That's a quarter size project. to we'll start working on taxes and we can go to, you know, um, smaller scales of that or taxes. Oh, what, what we haven't talked about is verb noun constructs. Um, a chunk of a project is always like, if you want to set yourself up, it always has a verb and a noun, verb and a noun. So let's take this taxes example. Um, that's the noun. Okay. Now what we do most of the time is that we just change the verbs that we use in front of the noun. Right, so this could be, I said start working on taxes, but obviously it could be something like, you know, collect um, documents or as a complex verb, but com collect documents for taxes. Um, you know, compile, no, we've already done that. Um, this might be, um, start, you know, fill out paperwork for. For taxes. Then we can say, you know, file taxes. And then we could have pay taxes. Um, or get your money from taxes, whatever that is, right? We can see how we're doing. Most of the work is happening with the verbs. And 
which is what you can see me doing here, right? So this taxes is the noun, the verb in front of it is what's going on there. So, you know, the gym, the gym routine is a little bit different in the sense of like what you're trying to do is get healthy. It's related to that. So I've done some, um, some work there, but you can see that the um, routine at the gym is the complex noun, whereas the establish it two times a week is sort of the, the verb that goes with that. The establish is the verb, but it's just a little clarity there. So you're always gonna be thinking in verb noun constructs. Now it turns out that there are, Jess, we don't have, do we have any resources that show them the like universal project and task verbs? We don't have any posts about that, but I think we might have some pins from Pinterest. Yeah, so either show them the pin from Pinterest or we'll make a commitment to have that as an, as an asset that's gonna be in the um, momentum planning course. Super handy because you know what? There's a list of 47, I can't remember, it's in the book. But there's a list of common project verbs and task verbs that we don't have to do the thinking. You just can figure out what noun you wanna work on and go from there. So Jess is gonna hook us up with that. But that's all we're doing here, guys, is like changing these nouns and verbs around as we go around, okay? Um, I either did a terrible job of explaining that or we'll get there here in a minute when we get into the examples. So that's the annual, um, that's the annual. And so when we jump to the quarterly momentum planner, you can see what we're doing here. Remember how I said every planner is going to have the higher vision, it's gonna have this month, and then it's gonna have where you can start planning out what you're doing each one. So the quarterly momentum planner is an example of just that. Most of these things we've talked about. Um, objectives is just a, um, a word that's bigger than project. Um, in the years to come, we might just say quarterly, quarter size projects going forward because I realize introducing objectives isn't quite that handy, but we kept it because people are used to that language. Objectives is just the, the um, word we use for bigger projects because the English language does not have a word for bigger projects like it does, like we have the word mansion for bigger house or for big house. We don't have that word in English um, for projects, even though we experience way more bigger projects than we do big houses. Driving on. Uh, most of this you've seen, milestones and benchmarks. Sometimes this trips people up. Milestones are the things that we can put out there that show progress towards those given goals, okay? Um, it could be, if we're talking from an entrepreneurial context, it could be, you know, a major milestone. Uh, well, these are the major milestones to take. So it could be things like, you know, you finish your sales page or you finish that dreaded about page. Why are, why are about pages so hard? I don't know. They just are, okay? Um, those could be milestones, things that you set in advance would show that you're taking steps towards those goals. Benchmarks are things that happen along the way that shows progress or shows how much you're doing. So in the previous example, when I mentioned I'm going to the gym um, two times a week and three times a week, right? For a benchmark for that particular one is like, you know, went to the gym three times per week, four weeks in a row, right? Um, could be something you can, write, you can write in there. And at the bottom, we have top wins this quarter, what set up success and what to improve. And this is just so you can do a mini after action review. So that you can say, you know what, this quarter, these are the top things that came up for me. What set up success or these are the things that I did that set that up and what to improve are the things that what you might sound like um, things to improve. Um, so that you can have better successes in the future. So just a little mini um, after action review slot there. Okay. And you might be thinking, okay, Charlie, this is getting repetitive. Like I know what all these words mean. I know like how to break things down. And if it's getting repetitive, fantastic. You get what we're doing on the momentum planners. You rock. Um, we can jump into some of the, the um, grittier parts. It's the same um, chunking, linking, and sequencing. We have a post on that on the blog um, that Jess is going to link up real quick. It's the same process over and over again. I don't want you to learn how to do 17 different steps when it's just the same steps applied to different scales of time. 
again, we see that same thing that I told you about three different time perspectives, higher time perspective, this month perspective, and sorry, I'm on the monthly momentum planner if you're listening along and not watching. Um, so we see the higher vision, we see the current vision, and we see the week size projects. Boom, boom, boom. And then we have a calendar that you can use all sorts of different and fun ways. So you could theme your days. Um, you could use this top block here for like, you know, you could just say exercise. Um, if it were me, I would just say E. Um, and then every day that I exercised at the gym, or I'd say E or G, like G, you know, G, G, if you're going to, if you're using the digital version. Um, don't really need to explain the calendar. You guys can use calendars however you wish. Um, if you have questions about that, happy to answer. So as we go into the weekly momentum planner, guess what? Same basic thing again. Um, week size or the higher perspective, current perspective, um, excuse me, higher perspective, current perspective, then step down. So you can plan down the actual days. So there's a little way that you can use here. Another blog post Jess will throw in there is um, how to use these blocks. Consider whether it works for you to use these lines. Um, kind of think about them as the blocks you may have during your day. Okay, so if you have three focus blocks, you know, those top three lines may relate to that. Or um, I know, for instance, when I use the planners, whenever I have to write more than like, if I'm looking at Monday, for instance, and I see that I have three meetings, I know that I'm not going to get nearly as much done on the creative side because that's my day. Um, what I typically will do is, for instance, today I had interview with Liza. I have the Momentum Planners webinar. And then I have a interview um, for probably Liza might not like me telling her name. So um, I'll say interview for a book. Y'all didn't see that. Liza's amazing. She'll forgive me, I hope. Um, so I have two book interviews. This, I'll leave them that way. Um, I know when I write this way, I always write my, my meetings on the bottom and work my way up. So I know if I have four meetings, like one, two, three, four, this is three, but I know if I had four, that at most I have one focus block that I can use or maybe one admin block that I can use. So it's just helpful for me to not overbook a day. So I can look at my schedule for the week, fill in my meetings and then just see how much open space that I have. And that helps me figure out what projects I'm going to do this week. Okay. Super handy to have that baked in. You don't have to do it that way. Just a tip. Um, but um, that's what you, that's how you can use those. And so what I would say here is like write article um, for ink, right? And you know, that would show pretty much what I could do. I'd have one more slide. I'd probably throw that as an admin slot myself, but that's just me. Um, scheduled events, what they sound like over there. Deadlines, always handy to know if you got something due because, you know, here's the thing. Remember, just because the deadline is Thursday doesn't mean that you start working on it Thursday. Yes, I see you. I'm not trying to call you out. Yes, I am. Um, you know, if you see that you have the deadline on Thursday, maybe work on it Wednesday. Um, or do the heavy lifting Wednesday and do the final edits on Thursday as opposed to trying to do it all at once. Okay. That's the weekly and daily. What do you need to know about the daily? Um, this is the one where given that there's a lot going on, you don't see the higher perspective. True story. Most people tell us once that once they get their arms around momentum planning, that the weekly Momentum Planner is what drives most of their day, okay? Um, on particular busy days is when people will um, pull out the daily Momentum Planner and really get down there. But for most people, or for a lot of people, I won't say for most, for a lot of people who talk to us about it, the weekly Momentum Planner drives a lot of their planning, okay? Um, but I'll jump into this supporting task. How, did, how you chunk that down, energy level that goes back to that, you know, hot, warm, cold, please leave me alone. Um, it's kind of the levels there um, that, that you want to look at. Um, emergent tasks are super important and many people report back that this is one of the more helpful things that they've, that they've gotten from the momentum planning process 
is seeing how many emergent things pop up that they didn't plan for. And it helps them figure out like that delta between, or excuse me, that gap between how much they're planning versus what's showing up. Okay. So yes, I think I've covered them all. And I think I'll just go to questions from here. Um, and because I'm not full screen, I think I can actually see these questions. All right, so I'm gonna leave this up. I'm gonna jump around, um, jump around, jump around. Okay, I won't do it. Um, so yeah, Sarah, thanks. The productivity jumpstart sheet has a word bank of action verbs for planning. Yes, um, thanks for reminding me of that. Um, some people love the productivity jumpstarter, y'all, and some people will use the productivity jumpstarter. Um, it's not, it's one of our free planners, um, but they'll use the productivity jump starter to warm themselves up in the morning. And then they'll jump right into their planning after they've got a little bit of momentum. So um, definitely that's a good companion resource, just like the action item catcher is a good companion resource. What I mentioned earlier that I want to talk about while we're on the daily momentum planners, let's just pretend that this is 1 p.m., right? What you can do is say that like, this is an admin block, you know, and that's an admin block. And you can just say that whole hour is an admin block. And that's where you will go to either action item catcher, or maybe you go to your to-do list, or maybe you go to Asana where you've been keeping up with all these types of things. And you can just work down that particular list and not so much worry about putting everything on your daily planner, except for maybe the things that pop up, the emergent task, okay? A lot of people will do that, um, but I think part of the reason why the weekly momentum planner drives so much of people's work is that this becomes your, excuse me, this becomes your bigger dashboard. And so what you can do is, um, today's, is today Tuesday? Yeah, it's Tuesday. Um, so you can say, you know, admin block from, you know, one to two to three o'clock don't do that. Um, one to two o'clock and you might, you know, end up working one o'clock to two thirty. Um, that's one way you can do it. Um, or, okay, it's not letting me put two thirty on there, but that's fine. Um, cause I put that dash in there. Um, or you can easily say, you know, my plan time is one hour, but I actually took 90 minutes. Do yourself a favor guys, unless you're really, unless you're like an engineer or you're going through some quality management program, give yourself the break of kind of using 15 minute time increments and don't worry about the two, like, do, is it really helpful to know that something took you 17 minutes versus 15 minutes? Probably not, unless you're an engineer and that's just the way you think, you're a lawyer and you charge in six minute increments or you're going through some quality management program where people do want to know that. But for most of us, to the 15 minute increment is good enough. 